from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Scientists of the world have freely exchanged their knowledge. This worldwide search for truth has led to the greatest of all discoveries, atomic energy. No one scientist or nation is responsible. The periodic law of the elements was discovered relativity by Einstein, a German. The atomic nucleus by Rutherford, a New Zealander. Atomic structure by the Dane, Niels Bohr. Positron by Anderson of the United States. The neutron by Chadwick of Great Britain. Artificial radioactivity by the Joliots of France. Uranium was transmuted by Fermi of Italy. The mesotron theory was developed by Yukawa in Japan. Barium was derived from uranium by Hahn of Germany. Uranium was split by Meitner of Austria. This pooling of knowledge is shared by all. There is no secret. When a neutron strikes, the atom is split. Released neutrons split other atoms. The result is atomic energy. Shall the people of the world use this energy for the destruction or the betterment of mankind? The United States used this power to destroy Hiroshima. A flash, a blast, the release of deadly radioactive rays. And in a matter of seconds, downtown New York would be a mass of ruins. Throughout the entire lower end of Manhattan, most people would be dead. All buildings from Washington Square to the Battery would be destroyed. In Chicago, from Halsted Street to Lake Michigan and from Chicago Avenue to Roosevelt Road, the city would lie in ruins. In San Francisco, devastation would be complete from Pacific Avenue to Townsend Street and from Van Ness Avenue to the Ferry Building. One atomic bomb did this to a city and its people. ruthless aggressors of the past had no such weapon. A soldier of Alexander with one spear killed one. Napoleon's cannon in one firing killed 12. The Kaiser's big Bertha Killed 88. Hitler's B2 killed 168. Japan 
Iran's war against the United States ended after a B-29 Drop-1 atomic bomb that killed close to 100,000. deadly power can be exerted at great distances. The first atomic bomb was dropped on a round trip of 3,000 miles on August 1945. On November 20th of that year, the effective range was extended to 8,000 miles. The United States had demonstrated that an atomic bomb could be launched to reach any country in the world. A grim reminder to all nations that had the bomb and this plane been in possession of the Axis powers, they could have conquered the world. There would have been no defense against this weapon. A single plane would have broken through to destroy the heart of London. V-2s with atomic warheads could have destroyed England. At the moment of surrender, Hitler had in the blueprint stage transoceanic rockets, which could have destroyed our city. U-boats could have surfaced off our shores and launched atomic rockets against vital targets. The fifth column would have had an even more insidious means of destruction. Parts of bombs could have been smuggled in, and under the cloak of darkness, infernal machines could have been assembled by saboteurs. It is therefore an imperative necessity that all the nations of the world unite to avert catastrophe. The United Nations must establish a worldwide control of atomic energy and of other weapons of mass destruction. together make laws which will abolish war, laws which will hold the individual in all lands responsible for crime against world peace. Only through proper control of atomic energy can we answer the question how this great force may be used for the benefit of mankind. Atomic energy, freed from the menace of war, can be for all people, in all nations, the great fusing force of one world. The choice is clear. It is life or death. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.